our featured writer for this video is Loreto Paras Sulit. Loreto was born in Ermita, Manila. Her works were famous during 1927 to 1937, including short stories where Jose Garcia Villa was an admirer of her works. She co-founded the University of the Philippines or UP Writers Club in 1927 and graduated with Bachelor of Science in Education as Manya Cum Laude in 1930. She was a member of the Philippine Writers Association and the Literary Guild of the Philippines and also joined the Philippine National Red Cross as Secretary General in 1940. Man in the Pitan by Loreto Paras Sulit. The boys came to know him very well. Their friendship with this lonely man with a kind of voice began one day when the boys could not agree on the answer to a question in their day's lesson in catechism. As they passed the house where he stayed, they heard a discussion in loud angry voices. Lope shouting loudest of all. I tell you that I am right. My answer is the right one. Hugo and Felix grinned in mock disbelief. Lope with the curly herd, quick with his fist, quickly rode his leaves of his camisa de chino. Hugo and Felix also rolled up their sleeves. Now boys, can fist settle an argument? Are you trying to find out who is the strongest among you, or are you trying to find out who is right? The boys stopped short in their coming fight. Everybody knew everybody else in the pitan, so the boys knew that this was the man who had just arrived in town. They saw someone with an attractive, kindly face. His eyes could command when he wanted to. The strong line of his jaw reminded the boys of rocks. It seemed to tell them of something hard and unbreakable. As they stared at him, he went on to say, If you want to find out who is right, open your books, read the answer very well, and which of you gave the one exactly like it? One of you may win with his fists, but that would not prove that his answer is correct. His voice died away as he looked toward the sea. It seemed as if he had fallen into a dream. The boys walked away in silence. At a distance, they stopped and opened their catechisms. The man on the porch smiled to himself. After that say, whenever the boys passed by the spot, they would eagerly look for him. Usually, he was either reading or writing. When he saw them, he would wave to them. One day, Lope took a bunch of ripe mangosteen along with him. He pulled the other two with him and he shyly offered the fruit. The man's quick, bright smile completely won their hearts. Soon they were all conversing with him as though he were their favorite uncle. Boys, he asked them, would you like to learn another language besides Spanish? I'll teach you another if you can stay with me half an hour every day about this time. What language, sir? asks Felix. Have your choice. French, English, German? The boys look at him closely. At first, they thought he was joking, but his unsmiling face told them he was serious. Let us study English, suggested Lope. So English it was. After a week, they knew the English names of many objects in their homes and in the town. They could manage to short answers to questions, greetings, and simple statements. During the days that followed, Lope, who had been the most interested and active, appeared to be very absent-minded. 
What is the matter, Lope? asked the teacher. Lope tried to speak in a steady voice, but he could not stop the quiver of his lips. It is my mother, sir. My mother cannot see these days. She is almost blind. The doctor says she has to go to Manila to be operated on. But father cannot take her to Manila. We are very poor, sir. Let us go to your mother, Lope. Perhaps I can help her. He went inside the house and came out with a black bag. Lope had no chance to refuse. The man was fully prepared to go with him. Lope's mother was sitting on a bamboo chair in the shady portion of the yard. She inclined her face toward the sounds of coming footsteps. Lope ran to her and rubbed his face against her left arm. She smiled gently, but the light did not reach her eyes. There was only sorrow there. Mother, cried Lope excitedly, someone is here who will help us. Lope was so sure his friend could help his mother. His friend was now looking into his mother's eyes, just like any other doctor peering into them. Lope felt better just to see him examining his mother's eyes. When Lope's father arrived, there was a hurried consultation between the two men. Lope heard his friend say to his father, It is not serious, really. It will require only a simple operation if you will let me do it for you. From the look on his father's face, Lope knew that he has also immediately trusted this man. His mother was taken into the house. Lope waited outside. How long the hours seemed. Would they never finish? What was happening to his mother? At last, his father and friend came out. They smiled when they saw Lope's anxious face. Don't worry too much, Lope said his friend. Next week, your mother will be able to thread her needles even at night. Sir, said Lopez's father, in all this excitement, my young son has forgotten to tell me the name of the person we shall always be thankful and grateful to. May we know the name of mother's doctor? The man smiled briefly. Well, if you want to remember my name, it is Jose Rizal, he said. Answer the following questions to deepen your understanding of the text. Write your answers on a separate sheet of paper. Number 1. What does the story imply about Dr. Jose Rizal? Number 2. Did a man show sincerity in helping people? How? Number three, if you were Lopez's father, would you entrust your wife's life to someone you do not know? Why? Number four, Jose Rizal showed kindness in the story. If you were Lope, in what way would you repay that? Number five, how does this story, Man in the Pitan, inspire you?